What's poppin' everyone, it's your boy Levi, and whether you're new to the game or don't want to be a one-trick, here are three beginner characters you can play for each role. Starting off with the tanks. If you're trying to play the front lines for your team, you're going to want some mechanically easier characters so that you can focus on your positioning. All the characters chosen have some natural bulk in their kit, have good setup CC for your team to follow up, and have a good escape in case you find yourself out of position. Let's start with Eleven. Eleven is best played in appeal comp. While you might think she's an excellent diver given the range of her E, beginners might find this challenging as her follow-up taunt is very susceptible to being cancelled by enemy reaction. Players should look to cover your own teammates by taunting over your own backline to prevent enemy dive. Once your health starts to drop, you can pop your ultimate to heal back up. As mentioned earlier, one of Eleven's weaknesses is that she is susceptible to getting her taunt cancelled. Along the same lines, because you are a melee character playing the front lines, you are susceptible to poke comps. When looking to fight an enemy team, try to evaluate how much poke they have. Don't make yourself an easy target and look for flanks to engage before enemies whittle your health down. Next up is Magnus. Magnus is best played in a pick comp, but can adapt to play any style of comp. When playing Magnus, you'll want to look for wall stuns with your E on priority targets. Wall stun is a very powerful tool that lets your team follow up very easily. Additionally, you can always use your E as a displacement. You can look to stop enemy engages or channels with it. Magnus's biggest strength is how much utility he can provide for a team. In addition to having a wall stun, his Q is a projectile, which can be used to slow enemies trying to run away. The skill has a fairly long range, so you can use it to check bushes from a safe distance. Magnus is also a great chaser with his bike. Careful when using it to engage, as there's not many characters in the game who will be able able to keep up with his speed. If you look for a long range engage with your bike, you better be very ahead or enemy teams will look to burn you down before your team makes a chance to follow up. The bike can also be blocked by enemies, so if using it to escape, make sure there's a clear path. And finally, the last tank is Leon. While designated more as a support in Eternal Return 1.0, Leon can still manage the front lines with some build adjustments and accompany with another melee pick to help absorb some of the damage. While playing Leon, look to control engages with your QE combo. Once landing a good engage, look to alt targets back towards your team or into a nearby wall. You'll have to land a good engage though because missing will put you in the middle of an enemy team and susceptible to getting burned down. Leon's biggest strength is that he can provide a shield for his teammates. This works excellent in dive comps as his team will be all grouped together, but you might find yourself out of of range if paired with a range carry. Another one of Leon's biggest strengths is his hard engage. Because his QE combo can't be interrupted when you have to force a fight, it's a reliable engage assuming that you're accurate. It can also be used over walls to flank unsuspecting enemies. If these characters are on the easier side for you, then it's time to try out something a little bit more mechanical. Look to pick up Estelle, a character that can give shields, soak damage, and dish out a good amount of damage with her own EW combo. Next up, we're going to combine the Bruisers, Melee Carries, and Assassins into one category. Pick these up when your team needs a frontline carry. All these characters have a way of dealing damage, soaking some damage, or even evading damage, but probably shouldn't be picked as a single threat composition. The first character we're going to look at is for those that like right clickers. Starting off, we have Yuki, a melee pick that has a good time diving marksman character due to his disarmability. While Yuki can sit back and look for stuns, he's best in a role that allows him and a teammate to dive backline marksmen or look for picks with his Q stun. Yuki has a lot of good tools in his kit, but they're only good in certain situations. Yuki's E is a disarm, which is a unique CC type in Eternal Return. He's able to stop characters from basic attacking if hitting them with his E. As you can probably imagine, this isn't that strong against amp characters, as they'll still be able to react with their abilities. But for marksmen, it's a deadly tool. Yuki's Q turns his next basic attack into a stun, meaning it's no longer considered a spell. And it's one of the best stuns for getting picks. Use this to catch opponents who are out of position as the only way to dodge it are with abilities that can block basic attacks. Yuki gets access to two-handed sword and dual swords. Two-handed weapon skill is great as it allows you to parry incoming abilities. While it will leave you telegraphed, use it to negate a big spell and then look to turn the tables onto your enemies. Yuki's weakness is that outside of his ultimate, he lacks AoE damage. His abilities are entirely single target and if you do look for a big ultimate, it's a few seconds of self-stun to channel the ultimate. Try not to get baited into ulting too early and look to use walls to your advantage to help angle your ultimate. Next up for the amp enjoyers we have Kathy. Kathy is an assassin archetype and is very good at eliminating targets. Kathy slots into a lot of team comms well as she mostly does her own thing. She doesn't really need a team to set her up to do her job. When playing Kathy you have a high amount of damage in your kit and a large amount of AoE as well. Playing Kathy is all about timing though. Use your presence to force enemies to react to you. If you're playing dagger Kathy you can also look the dagger skill to surprise and gauge on enemies. Regardless of how you enter, look to try and get a suture on a priority target, whether you're hitting two targets together for a double stun or dragging a target to a wall. Then look to get your abilities down on that target. Ideally, your job at minimum is to trade one enemy's life for your combo. Kathy's biggest weakness is the follow up to that. After she commits her kit, she doesn't have a ton of follow up damage in a fight. Ideally, your best case scenario is that you kill a target and then you help get a lot of damage down on the next one before you go down. But make sure you at least kill your target. That's job number one. Kathy's ultimate also puts a heal down for herself and her allies. 
This heal is slightly deceptive when fighting against. It's not enough of a heal to make or break any team fights or to consider her a support or anything, but it does give her a little bit of survivability in her combo as it's likely that your ult will put you deep. And the last character for this category is Vanya. She's a ranged character there that plays more on the utility side than the damage side. Vanya is an excellent peeler and disengage character. She makes it very difficult for teams to dive her, being able to put enemies to sleep, avoid damage with W, and survive long engages with consistent shields. Vanya is very good at baiting enemies into a fight. Look to fight in tight corridors as it gives you an easier time hitting sleeps and gaining shields. Put enemies into a position where they have to overcommit to try and kill you, and then negate their damage using your tools. If things get bad, you can always use your E as an uninterruptible damage to get out. Vanya provides a lot of utility, but her weakness comes in damage. This character does not do a ton of damage, and if she's left last in the fight, it's likely you're not going to kill many targets. Because she has really good Tillas in her kit, you can look to use her credits on teammates to help funnel transitions if needed. Once again, if these characters are all on the easier side and you want a character that can kind of do it all and is a bit more challenging, look to Sua. Sua is a battle mage that has CC, AoE abilities, and sustain in the form of a heal on her E. Sua is not overly too difficult, but does require knowledge of Eternal Return to play her to her full potential. One of Sua's most powerful and underrated tools comes in her W, which gives her the option to CC immune herself, an ally, or a blind enemy. Knowing when to use which in which scenario makes this a very powerful tool. And the last role we're going to look at is the backline carries. These are your marksmen, your mages, your primary damage dealers. All these characters are great at pumping out damage whether it's in the form of basic attacks or abilities. While they would deal a bulk of the damage in a team fight, they lack the setup tools and will still need to play as a team. The first character we're going to look at is Ryo. Ryo is the most basic form of a marksman. She's long range to help you hit from a safe distance and can be played in peel comps and poke comps. Stand behind your team and look for opportunities to hit enemies with your basic attacks. Ryo's Q lets her swap back and forth between longbow and shortbow. In longbow form, Ryo can poke out her enemies when it's safe before a fight. Then once the fight breaks out, look to swap to your shortbow for the faster attack speed and you'll pump out damage quicker. If the situation gets dire, look to E over a wall to keep yourself safe. Ryo's ultimate lets her fire out a different sized arrow depending on what bow form she's in. When she's in longbow form, look to start the engage as a long range arrow will slow whoever it's hit, making it optimal for chasing down opponents. Ulting a shortbow has two parts. The first deals damage, the second part will push enemies away, making it a good peeling tool. If you push enemies into a wall, it will stun them. Ryo is also a bow user, which makes it great for checking bushes. In the past, bow skill used to apply vision upon cast, but now applies upon landing. Use this to check dangerous areas and avoid being ambushed. Being a marksman means you're very squishy, so avoid taking as much damage as possible in the fight. Next up is Ava. Ava is a relatively simple artillery mage equipped with a ton of AoE damage. If you're not someone that likes basic attackers, Ava plays relatively the same playstyle but uses his abilities instead. Ava and most mages will fit better into poke comps rather than peel comps. You can also pick them in dive comps, but your role isn't to dive with the team, it's to layer damage on top of your divers. If your allies are diving, this will leave you susceptible, so pay attention to your flanks. When playing Ava, look to poke enemies down with Q and R before the fight breaks out. You'll want to poke down an enemy's health bar so that they're forced to take a disadvantageous fight or your enemies are forced to back off. Make use of Ava's telepathy passive. Being able to loot bodies and take objectives from a distance allows you and your team to not be put into compromising positions when contesting an objective. Ava doesn't have any reliable CC in her kit and needs a character to help set her up. She can look to follow up on a teammate's CC by placing her W down, but it's unlikely she's hitting the knockup part raw. Extended fights can be tough for Ava if you're not accurate with her abilities. Having all skill shots, Ava's ultimate can also be used when she has enough BF meter. Hitting spells allows her to gain meter and ulting depletes it. If you're unable to consistently land spells in a fight, you'll be limiting your potential with her. Make sure to always keep your meter up going into fights. The last backline character is Theodore. Theo is a mix of backline carry and support that can be flexed in the most comps. Play him in pick comps and look for stuns with E to catch out unsuspecting opponents, or put him in dive comps with two melees to provide cover fire. Theodore is an interesting character. While once regarded as a support, he does enough damage in Eternal Return 1.0 to be considered a secondary damage dealer in a fight. The challenge with Theodore is his W. You'll want to position your scream optimally as poor placement will result in the loss of damage and healing for your team. In a comp where you're the offensive option, you'll want to set up your screen to where you can look to spread your E across multiple targets and have your Q fire into the middle of enemies. Try to take fights in corridors so that enemies are forced to take your Q and R damage. In comps with melee teammates, you want to use your ult to start the engage. Speed your team in and look to line up your screen with teammates so that your Q fire heals them. Be careful because you're more likely to be vulnerable in these type of comps. 
Theodore also has access to sniper skill, which is a great tool for checking bushes, but also can be used to look across jump pads. Use it to see if teams are waiting for you at the other end of the jump pad or if a team is planning to come over. If a team does get the jump on you, use a nearby bush to go stealth and try to make a getaway. And as always, if you're looking for a more mechanically challenging character, look to Jenny. Jenny is a unique character in a total return, being an amp character that plays like a marksman. While her playstyles do bounce back and forth from a burst mage to an amp marksman, she's great as an anti-dive damage dealer, being able to put pressure on divers with her ultimate and being able to survive fatal damage with her play dead passive. Considering we only have two main supports in Eternal Return, I won't be touching on them in this video. To learn about how all the characters fit into all types of comps in Eternal Return, you'll want to check out my video on who to main. Click or tap the screen now and you'll be taken to that video that shows how difficult and what comp to play each character in.